Today I want to talk about the idea of loneliness and you're probably thinking what has loneliness got to do with branding or marketing. Um, uh, the reason why I want to talk about this today is because um, I was kind of inspired to do to do the video about that because a couple of uh, weeks ago um, I was approached by a local charity looking basically for some support with their sort of design and marketing of a, a, a loneliness seminar that they're running and although I don't normally do free work I just felt really compelled um, sort of to help them and support them because um, I know in my family you know I lost basically my brother to sort of mental health um, uh, a number of years ago so for me it just really really sort of um, stood out and not only that working as a sort of like a solopreneur stroke freelancer it can actually be um, quite a lonely journey sometimes and so I just thought I would just share sort of four or five or tips around what I have done as a freelancer to help me kind of stay connected really to what's going on and have really reduced any kind of feeling of loneliness. I know that when I first started my business I went from working in a big agency with loads of support and staff and I think when you work in a big agency it's very easy when you're in the agency to think that oh freelance is a really great job and when you become freelance you know because you want to be your own boss but the reality is is that actually it can be really really lonely you know you go from having IT people, new business people, um, project managers, you know, you've got this great big support network around you. But then when you work for yourself, it's just little old you, you know? And I remember the first, I think first two or three months of my business, like the penny really dropped. You know, I realized like, holy crap, basically, <laughs> you know, I now have to go out, I have to be the new business person, I have to be the uh, project manager, I have to be the designer, I have to be the, 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 the bookkeeper, you have to be all these things. And that in itself makes you feel lonely, but it can be quite a shock to the system. So like I said, what are some of the strategies that I've used to help me get out there and, and help me sort of stay connected? So the first one is face-to-face -face networking. Um, those are sort of networking groups, there's, there's hundreds if not thousands um, across the UK. Um, some of them are kind of pay-to-go um, where you can just turn up as and when you want. There are others that are, um, are more membership based. Uh, some people like the freedom to be able to go to different events as and when they want. However, I do know that um, over the years I've really started to see the benefit in actually maybe actually joining or really committing to um, one networking that you go to every week or every month. Um, some of them obviously are um, at the crack of dawn, five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning if you could, if you're happy to get up at that time. Um, other than other ones are in the afternoon or in the evening and the great thing is if there's that many different ones around you'll find one that you can fit around your work schedule um, the second thing is um, things like trade shows and seminars obviously there's been a massive growth now in sort of um, you know tech events or um, creative seminars or conferences you know um, those are really really great places it's an opportunity for you sort of to learn and um, do new business at the same time. So a lot of seminars obviously have workshops and things like that. So then the third thing is um, online networking. Obviously there's some great online networking platforms, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media really platforms are a great place for you to um, stay connected or feel connected with what's going on. I mean, and I know over the years, I think what I've really found beneficial is to join some groups and really interact, you know, and be a little bit more proactive. I know as myself, I would call myself as a, a little bit of a introverted creator um, and so for me getting out there and you know talking to people is not always something that I've always felt very confident in but I've over the years the more I've gained my confidence and the more I strike a conversation if it's a case of just asking questions um, and that's actually something that I've really found rather than going into any of these things doesn't matter whether it's face-to-face -face networking or social networking that you go there um, and you you add value or you provide some kind of value um, uh, where was I? Number three. I think fourth, there's a lot of new co-working spaces out there. Um, I know Manchester has some really, really fantastic co-working spaces. Um, I think there's WeWork, there's the Federation, there is um, actually there's the Sharp Project, which is just north of Manchester, fantastic facility. Um, 
So yeah, those again are great places that you can just go for the day or you can go, um, I think you can get an office for a week or a month, you know, they're really flexible solution that you can then use to sort of um, um, that help you sort of, I suppose, grow your business as you go along. Um, and then I think the sort of, I'd say the fifth thing, which is combining and thinking about it from more of a personal perspective. So looking at things like um, sports clubs. So you may be, like I said, I don't know, maybe you like running or whether it's snowboarding or whether it's um, fishing, <laughs> you know, or cake making or whatever it is. There are hundreds, not thousands, lots of different clubs or associations that you can join. So then again, you're not only are you um, sort of getting out there and meeting new people, um, but it's in an environment where it's not like a big sell. Obviously, I you know things like networking events and conference and things like that do tend to sort of obviously everybody's there obviously on business. Whereas, you know, if you're part of a running club or a ski club, you know, it's a lot feels a lot more um, relaxed to sort of start talking or having a chat with somebody who's there and say, oh, what do you do? You know, and, you know, I find some of those things often um, things that actually sometimes are a bit left field from where you would think of going are sometimes actually, you know, produce some of the, the best kind of leads. The key thing with all of those, and what I've really learned over the years, think about what your intention is. I don't know whether it's, you know, you want to partner with a, a web developer, or you need to find somebody to help you with animation, or if you want a, a better accountant or something, when you actually set the intention before you go to those events, you'll find that actually sometimes that person kind of pops up and you, the person beside you. I know a funny thing that happened, which is I remember thinking, oh, I could really do with a new accountant. And um, the next minute I got invited to um, a sales workshop. And when I went to the sales workshop, but lo and behold, the guy beside me happened to be an accountant. Um, and we got chatting with him and actually while I didn't end up working with that guy he was too expensive um, he referred me to someone else who um, uh, who I know has been my basically been my accountant for sort of three or four years so yeah so I think like I said I think definitely what I've learned is that when you go to networking events any kind of networking it's about being of value you know if you provide a lot of value then people will um, it just helps to build relationships. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed those tips. Um, if you please give me the thumbs up and um, also please subscribe. Uh, and yeah, I hopefully see you next time. Speak to you later. Bye.